Hola, mi nombre es Andrew Callahan y hoy estamos en una ciudad que se llama Eagle Pass, una ciudad en Texas muy cerca a la frontera. In our previous episode, we were in Arizona, in Gringo Pass, covering the border situation there. But in the grand scheme of human Gringo Pass is small potatoes compared to Eagle Pass. In the past couple of years or the past couple of months, Eagle Pass has kind of been the center of the uh, border crisis in the U.S., mainly because the border here is less. It's a river instead of a wall, and you can't build a wall in the river, I don't think. Plus, from a population perspective, Wait, Eagle Pass is, is in a pretty remote yeah, remember, area. And I so for a long Texas time, videos. our government paid it no mind. The uh, Border Patrol and ICE's budget is about 17 and 18 billion dollars per year, and they spend most of that money fortifying more borders like the border between El Paso and Juarez, San Ysidro and Tijuana, and even Laredo in South Texas. Which has caused the cartel that controls human smuggling routes along the border to shift their operations to this dandy little town. Which up until this year was virtually unknown, aside from being the place where No Country for Old Men was filmed. Eagle Pass has been on the map Swear. recently, more in the past one, two to oh, maybe three years movie. more than it's been like its whole life. The scene yesterday in Eagle Pass, Texas has become quite familiar. Texas has taken control of a park in Eagle Pass in the fight over the state's razor wire on the border. The Biden administration is asking the high court to let patrol officers take it down because it's interfering with federal law. Thousands are crossing here like uh, we had like a couple weeks ago like 6,000 crossing one night like just caravans of them come through. Elon Musk came a couple weeks ago. I feel like I mean it's coming and putting some attention on it because we're trying to get help like this is, is getting out of hand like a lot of business owners are complaining it's it's getting like to be a big deal you know in our previous coverage along the Arizona border I got the chance to speak to many migrants of different origin some from Guatemala some from Guinea some from Senegal and some from Bangladesh and though their stories were all quite different the common thread between them was economic Yo, uncertainty good, big booty and Benson. political instability in their home country which they were happy to tell me about what My I wasn't board. able to gather a lot of information about was the actual process of being by a coyote. And so after leaving Arizona, I came into contact with two coyotes who live in Piedras Negras, the town across the border from Eagle Pass, Piedras who had somehow Negras. seen my show, and so agreed to give me an interview, as well as a complete ride-along and a tour of their operations. However, their meetup instructions were pretty sketchy. They refused to meet me across the border in Texas, and instead insisted that I walk over the border on foot to meet them on the other side. So I figured that just to be safe, I'd Bien find a sura. local bilingual friend to help walk me across and make sure nothing crazy Crazy happen. So I hit up local rapper Chetta Blanco to essentially be my escort. Riding with 50 racks, so I keep me a strap on my lap and a strap in the back. Riding with 20 bags of the gas in the trunk, gotta serve like the whole eagle pass. And I got EP on my back, so I do what I do to put us on the map. Remember way back in like 2016 when young Chetta had married the trap. Chetta is born and raised in Eagle Pass, and growing up had a I'm lot of friends that. and family who were involved I'm in the coyote that shit. business. I'm so how, how much does it typically cost to have I'm a coyote transport you across the river? It can go, I've heard different ranges, I've heard I've heard 5,000, 10,000. That's just like like crossing the river. Then you still have to pay a couple thousand to like get get taken up to San Antonio. Cause leaving Eagle Pass, there's a checkpoint. Like any city you go to from here, you're gonna get stopped by Border Patrol just to make sure you're a US citizen and then you're good to go. So really you, you gotta pay another couple thousand to make it out of the city. So yeah. people end up spending like 20 bands, bro. Like to go from Mexico to Chicago, San Antonio, anywhere up where they're trying to work, yeah. they, they spend 15 to 20 bands for sure. And do a lot of migrants cross without the help of yeah. a coyote? A lot of them do. Surprisingly, like I came, uh, I came across some, and I even talked to some. They say that uh, with zero money, they came over here walking, like from Venezuela, Ecuador, Colombia, like all these different countries where the country's just so bad. They don't have like, like there's no light and water sources. There's no food, like things like that. No jobs, obviously. And they said Mexico is like the hardest part that the police will always rob them. Like ten, twenty dollars that they might have anything, they'll take anything off you, like. On Friday, they clashed with Mexican police here wearing riot shields. Some migrants jumped into the river using rafts to get across. I'm very for them coming here and bettering their life. That's the thing. Like, I'm very for Same. like. I wish we had room for everybody, but there's just I'm there's just got to be a more structured that's, that's way true. for sure. Like, I, I don't know the answer to it, but I, the answer to me is not send them back because there, there's nothing for them. You're sending them back to where they can just get killed starve and live a life of poverty like i wouldn't i wouldn't say sending them back is the answer we we got to figure out how we can budget and how we can have them here you know yeah. 1 p.m was the time that i was scheduled to meet the coyotes who told me on signal that they were waiting for me on foot in a plaza across the bridge 
Cheddar told me it takes no more than five minutes to get into Mexico from Eagle Pass. No border patrol, no customs, no nothing. We're literally right at the bridge, Damn. so a couple hundred feet over there you is the river. The border for we're gonna content? walk over the river, what over the, the bridge. Uh, we're gonna meet up with a coyote, professional coyote. He's no gonna take you through his route. You're gonna go probably no like niche. over some like desert areas. So basically, you're just gonna go Shut through up. what what, uh, what an immigrant would have to go through without papers for sure. How to cross so into the United States with no so papers? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Have you gone over there a lot, like growing up? All the time, bro. I come and buy medicine. I come and get my my contacts. Like a pair of contacts is like eight bucks, bro. 9-11 2.0 gonna happen. What made you say that, Zero G Striker? You're scaring me. What do you know, actually? We first pass a toll booth with two attendants who barely notice us. It's pretty crazy how easy it is for us to cross. <laughs> yup. If you got a dollar, you're good. Cheta gives a teller one US dollar and the border opens. Thank you. So we're now basically entering Mexico and it was that easy. That easy, bro. When, once we get to the end of this bridge, there is like a little hut you go through, but they right. don't check for ID. They don't, they don't pat you down, nothing. They don't check for ID. They don't check for ID at all. But then on the other hand, is that a border patrol boat? Yeah. So that's the Rio Grande right there. Huh? Yep. I right, look, they're getting married right now. Oh. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hey, congratulations! <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, they're getting married on the bridge, what? so so he or she gets her citizenship. What? So, what? Yes, that's how it works. Well, some say it's the right way to come into the country. Swear. Others argue it's an immigration loophole as they exchange vows and say, I do, at the doorstep of our border. So one of them is probably a uh, like full Mexican <laughs> citizen, and one of them Good does dude. have U.S. papers. Good so method. one of them marrying the other allows the other to now become a U.S. citizen. That, 30 seconds after the witnessing the fascinating border marriage, me and Cheta arrived in Mexico and entered the plaza where the coyotes said they'd be waiting. All right, so we're in Mexico now. We're in Mexico. At first, we couldn't find them. Oh, this, I think these fools are over here, bro. <laughs> then, in the corner of the plaza, we saw three dudes. One with a gold chain and two others. I wasn't quite sure, but I think these are my guys. What's up, bro? What's up, Andres? What's going on, man? What's going on, bro? To my surprise, these dudes couldn't have been older than maybe 20. What is the plan? What are we going to do? Vive la experiencia, vaya, no? No, es God, la vez. Oh, es la vez. Yeah, sí. I told them it was my first time meeting a coyote, and they seemed a bit apprehensive. One of them began throwing up gang signs, and the other abruptly asked everyone except for me and my cameraman to leave. Oh, sí. Sí. No, pues, tratamos de tomar un taxi. Pues, him on to himself. Himself. <laughs> Para comenzar. Para comenzar. Para comenzar. Okay, Pero, okay Dio, do a 4K que, try uh, really, bro? Porque, Come on, sí. man, learn some respect. Hay varias cosas que pasan y... No quiero que ocurra algo malo. Sí, Muy bien. Be, be as like discreet as possible. They say the larger our group is, the more likely we are to draw negative attention. Sí, nomás queremos que sea discreto y si pues van a grabar en la cámara, pues no sé si me pueden borrar a mí sí. la cara. Sí, okay. por favor. Sí, Sabemos, sí, 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 sí. Porque no sí. va a ocurrir algo malo. Pero pues bueno, vamos a darle, ¿no? ¿Quieren la experiencia? Sí, Venga, sí, vamos. Sí, no. God knows where. Uh, Very brave, the taxi but... begins driving, eastbound, away from the border plaza and into the heart of Piedras Negras. For some context, Piedras is generally considered to be a pretty safe border town. It actually has the lowest homicide rate of any border town on the Mexican side and is literally 10 times safer than Tijuana or Juarez. It's also where nachos were invented 80 years ago by a man named Ignacio Freaky Anaya, ass. whose simple combination of cheese and tortilla chips irreversibly altered the course of history. Plus, according to the U.S. State Department's travel advisories, Coahuila, which is the Mexican state that Piedras is in, has a level two travel advisory, which means to exercise increased caution. So that's what I did. After all, there was no backing out at this point. We were in the complete custody of these two teenage coyotes, who said they were taking us to a spot along the Rio Grande where they'd been permitted to operate by a larger parent organization, which will not be named. We continue to drive until we reach the outskirts of town. Gang. The coyotes direct the driver to pull off behind the Oxo, which is like the Mexican 7-Eleven. And soon, we're driving on a remote road past what looks to be, like be me the and project or something. I'm not sure how to explain it. It looked like a trailer park built with concrete, if that makes sense. 
<laughs> Abruptly, we're instructed to immediately get out of the car, which is alarming and honestly quite disorienting, given the fact that I assumed we were going to the river. But still, my options for escape are pretty limited, so I figured it was time to just play it cool and do an interview. Um, officer, allá en el lado americano, sí. es army, también en el lado mexicano. Okay. Y eso también nos puede causar problemas a nosotros. Sí, yo entiendo. ¿Es, es peligroso oh, o no? Sí. Es muy peligroso porque es muchas, muy, muchas, muchas Es muchas. peligroso, pero sabemos. Sí. Es peligroso para la gente que no sabe. Para las hijos y abuelas como eso. Sí. 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 Eh, nos ha pasado a nosotros que hemos cruzado niños. They say that in terms of crossing the river, the shorter you are, the more dangerous it is. On a typical day, the Rio Grande is about four feet and nine inches deep, oh, which is just above Gigi the average Dalen. height of an eight-year-old. And over 58% of Mexicans reported not being able to swim, so it's very possible for young migrants below the water depth to drown if they lose footing. Upon further research, I learned that most of the world actually cannot swim, and there's a direct correlation between socioeconomic status and swimming ability. For example, Who in Norway, swim? where the median household income is 45,000 US dollars, 97% of people can swim. But in countries like Bangladesh, Guatemala, and Guinea, where many of these migrants come from, that number is below 20%. Damn. So it's I safe to say that most migrants, if not all migrants, cannot swim. I don't know why I was so surprised to learn this information. I guess I just assumed that swimming ability came naturally to all humans as a defense mechanism from drowning. <laughs> but maybe I thought this because I was so young when I learned to swim, the memory's been erased. Who knows? Nah, he's Life's actually stupid. Okay, back he's to the coyotes. He's actually stupid for that. Why do you do this kind of work? He said swimming is just a survival instinct. Maybe it was not a good path to take this work, but there's no other. It's the most strong sí. thing. You have to look where you want to do it. Whether it's good or bad. Maybe you have your family well. Yeah, that's what we tried. You have a lot of family here? I have my sisters. Okay. Yeah, I have 18 years. Of course, I have 18 years. I have 18 years. I have 18 years. I have been working hard for this. Pues digo, fue difícil más que nada, va. Pues vaya, tengo 18 años. Sí. Hay chavos de 13, 14, acá hacen lo mismo. Sí. Pero hay mucha babies, gente, hasta da tristeza que vieron los periódicos, noticias, gente muerta, ahogada. He says that while this job is lucrative, older. seeing how many migrants drown in the river has taken an emotional toll on him. Three no, you don't, bro. No, you don't. Okay, from a baby to a toddler, you think a toddler could just swim in a ocean since they were just swimming as a baby <laughs> yeah right buddy migrants have died near shelby park in eagle pass a woman and two children drowned in the rio grande river no, four they migrants can. including an infant have no drowned way. in eagle pass again it just it's unclear what can happen at any moment and this is the risk that these people take and you know sometimes there's kids involved he says that he tries his best to keep his clients safe but the river is unpredictable and so oftentimes there's nothing he video. can do to save them particularly if they've been carried away by an undercurrent. El agua, agua. es peligrosa. Hay veces Hay que sube y baja. En el agua, que abajo del agua se hacen remolinos okay. y te arrastran para abajo y tú ya no tienes forma de salir. They say that almost all migrants are well aware of the risks, but still cross the river anyway. Porque pues vaya todos quieren el sueño estar allá en en, en, en Estados Unidos. Porque hay el sueño como eso. ¿Cómo? Pero Estados Unidos es difícil para más personas también. ¿Por qué todas las personas quieren ir al norte? Sí, es que todos piensan, tienen la mentalidad de que unos se van y los que están aquí eh, y los nuevos que van, pues los que van creciendo les dicen que allá es lo mejor. Sí. Pagan mejor, buena comida, buenas casas. Sí. Pero yo he estado allá y he vivido realmente, no sé, he estado encerrado, trabajando encerrado, trabajando encerrado, sí. es lo único, pero pues de algo sí sirvió, pues es eh, lo único que voy para hacia allá es ganar dinero. Sí. ¿Y tú quieres ir a los Estados Unidos también? No, realmente ya no, ahorita estoy muy bien aquí. He says that he has no desire to immigrate into the U.S. Having worked a minimum wage job in San Antonio, he feels that many migrants who cross the river have an unrealistic expectation of what their life will be like in the U.S. But nonetheless, he doesn't challenge their fantasies yeah. or try to give them a reality check. Instead, he takes their money. After all, behind importing migrants is the most lucrative trade in town. ¿Cuánto cuesta para en tip, en típico para personas? Pues es que ahorita hay un American Dream. Mucha gente haciéndolo. ¿Cómo te puedes ir? Hay variedades. Being a Cowboys fan. Depende si tú quieres llevarte a alguien de aquí de Piedras Negras hasta Sananto. 
este. Son como 3 mil o 4 mil dólares. 4 mil para cada persona. Ajá. Sí. Es que ya las cosas cambiaron. Antes yo digo que recuerdo sí. cuando estaba trabajando de aquí a San Anto a usted. Eran 8 mil dólares. Levantador. <ríe> Con el que te recoge alimento, el que cruza, sí. todo, paquete completo. They say that just to cross the Rio Grande with a coyote is about 3,000 US dollars, but transportation to Austin, Texas is another 5,000 dollars. However, very few people that. are currently purchasing the full package and I'm instead are simply crossing the river and deliberately putting themselves in Border Patrol custody to begin the asylum seeking process. ¿Tienes problemas con la policía o no? No. Yo, no. no. Es difícil, para, pero los, la migra de Estados Unidos y Border Patrol, ¿hay problemas con ellos? Sí, hay problemas con ellos, pero nunca, ellos nunca nos ven. They say that both Mexican federales and municipal police turn a blind eye to their activities, but the U.S. Border Patrol has been very vigilant, and so we're heading to a place with far less Border Patrol presence than the port of entry. This, while safer for them, has a lot of negatives for migrants. Despite generally being portrayed in a negative light by the media, Border Patrol's job isn't just to apprehend and detain migrants, it's also to save them. Since 2014, Border Patrol has successfully executed over 25,000 rescues of migrants, many of whom are often found actively drowning in the river in Texas, which unfortunately happens almost every other day in the Rio Grande. Y te voy a contar algo. Un día íbamos con un camarada, el que nos enseñó, Íbamos normalmente y, y pues eso es obvio, varios tienen mu muchas brechas, vaya. Sí. Y pues encontramos un cuerpo ahí ahogado. Sí. Eso, eso me hizo sentir como miedo. Sí. A todos. Cuando miras really a una persona muerta, es miedo. Le calculaba unos 32, 35, uh -huh. ya estaba descompuesto. Sí. Si lo miraba muy bien, eran, tenía como tres días ya ahí ahogado, tirado. ¿Ustedes trabajan para ustedes o tienes una base? No, normalmente teníamos una base. They say they used to work day. for a larger uh, parent organization in the area, but after many years of loyalty and good faith, they've been permitted to work on their own, so long as they're not stealing clients away from the larger parent organization. As we continue to walk, I ask them if they see themselves as criminals. Yo no me considero criminal. Yo soy una buena persona. Hago cosas malas para hacer las buenas. Sí. O creo que sí dice, hago cosas malas que parecen buenas. ¿Crees en Dios? Creía en Dios. Mucho creía en Dios. Yo sé que existe, pero yo soy voto a la Santa Muerte. Sí. Like many people involved in Mexico's criminal underworld, yeah, these coyotes worship a deity called Santa Muerte, aka the Holy Death, the most controversial saint in the Catholic faith. Perhaps known most recently as being portrayed in Breaking Bad as the god worshipped by the Salamanca twins, Santa Muerte, along with Jesus Malverde, are generally portrayed by the media as being narco saints. However, this is not the full picture. She's worshipped by many different groups in Mexican society who are living on the margins, where death is a constant force and sometimes an inevitability, such as those living in an area that is constantly besieged by violence, those suffering from terminal illness, or much like the adherents of the Satanic Temple in America Ugh. by contrarians who detest the influence Ugh. of rigid Catholic values on Mexican society. A lot of people join at, to some level to be kind of contrarian. So it's no surprise that the Catholic Church officially condemns and rejects Santa Muerte. The Vatican referred to it as a devil, a demon, and an insult to the Christian faith. But on a larger cultural level, it's not supposed to symbolize the worship of death, but instead a symbol of hope to help people deal with the existential dread that death can bring. Santa Muerte asks her worshipers to cherish death instead of being afraid of it. She asks that we not fear mortality, but accept it as all of our shared fates and reminds us that death is not the end, but actually the beginning to the afterlife. It's thought that the first appearance of a death deity or skeletal Grim Reaper type figure emerged in medieval Europe in the wake of the Black Plague, which killed a third of the continent's population in under a decade. But there was also an Aztec deity called Muklan Tecutli, the god of death, who was often appeased during ritual human sacrifices performed by the Aztecs, who, along with the Mayans, controlled most of Mexico until 1521 AD. 
So, this god of death figure yeah. existed in both Spanish colonial and pre-colonization indigenous religions, but almost fell into cultural obscurity until the Mexican War began in 2006, leading to a collective 360,000 homicides. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> back to the end. Y tú trabajas aquí y después la dinero das a tu madre y papá y hermanos. Tengo hermanos sí. y mi mamá. Lamentablemente mi, pues, mi papá falleció, pero ah, eso no me, no me agüita. Porque, pues lo único que pienso es de que quiero que mis hermanos estén bien, que no agarren, que no miren que un mal camino como yo lo estoy haciendo. ¿Tienes miedo, miedo sobre ese, ese tipo de trabajo? ¿Miedo? Sí. Yo soy el miedo. <risa> ¿Verdad? Así debe ser. Todos tenemos miedo. Todos. Pero si no, si no agarras el miedo, lo tomas, él te va a comer. Sí. Él te come. Ahí está el miedo es puramente la mentalidad. Nunca no, no se ha topado de que, no sé, un pato muy fuerte levantó un carro. Sí. Un auto muy pesado es pura mentalidad. Tú es la mentalidad es la que tú, la que te está comiendo. Oh, ¿Sí vacas. 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 I feel like I could pick up an F-150 with my bare hands. Vacas. Me. vacas. Mamba mentality. Vacas. Vacas. Mm. vacas. Hamburgers. Lo siento. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Channel 5 Live Worldwide, Hollywood and Vine. Authority, Channel 5. Damn. Remember, man.